Eco Explorers. Are you ready to learn about energy and what fuels our planet with the Eco Explorers Club? I'm a little bit lonely here, so I think I'm going to need a friend to come and help me. Hi, Mia. Hi, Raven. Hi, Eco Explorers. My name is Mia and I'm one of SSE's sustainability experts and we're hopefully going to learn loads today and have lots of fun. Oh, yes, indeed. And today is all about energy. Now, I have way too much energy. Loads, look at this. <laughs> loads of energy. Oh. <laughs> Hey, calm down, Ruben. Why not tell us the warehouse story uh, before you use up all of that energy? Yes, that'd be a good idea. I don't want to get myself tired. Okay, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a gigantic warehouse. Now, you've all seen warehouses before. There's these big buildings and they keep boxes and stuff in there. This one was 10 miles high, 10 miles wide, 10 miles deep. Massive, huge, big one. What was it full of? Boxes. But these were magical boxes. And anybody could come up and they could take one of the boxes and it would make them happy when they had the box. And then they could pass to a friend and it would make them happy. And pass to another friend and make it happy. And if they're feeling sad, they could pass it back to them and they'd be happy again. And they would just pass around like this. And people tried to copy the boxes and make them, but they couldn't make them just the same as this. They were just great. They tried to break them open and smash them, but they couldn't smash the boxes either. There were these magical boxes that came from this warehouse that were passed around and made everybody happy. Mia, I've never seen this warehouse and I've never got one of these magical boxes. What on earth am I talking about? It sounds like the boxes are the energy and the warehouse is all the energy that's in the universe. And the boxes make people really happy because we need energy to do things. Ruben, what things can you think of that people need energy for? Oh, I'm good at this. Okay, they'll need things for like lifting, 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 oh, lifting, 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 oh. pushing, pushing. Okay, push it. Go on, go on, Declan, push it, push it, push it. Or, no, pull it, pull it, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, uh, bring it back, push it, push it. And then walking, walking, the energy for walking and running, and cycling, 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 and, and then jumping, and then, oh, jumping jacks, back to jumping jacks again. Woohoo! Yes, energy. Oh. Yeah, so energy is amazing and it exists in so many different forms. So we have light energy, we have heat energy, we have chemical energy energy in batteries and food, sound energy, and even magnetic energy. And that's just some of the forms that, of energy that are out there. And the cool thing is energy can change from one form to another, but it can't be destroyed and we can't just get rid of it. So energy changes all the time from one form to another. Why don't you tell the story about renewable energy? What about the one called the feast? Oh, the feast, the feast now. I don't know if you guys like food, but I love food, and this is all about food. Okay. <clears throat> Once upon a time, a long time ago in another world, there was a king, and the king had a huge castle filled with lots of his servants there, and he had a chef. Now, he loved the chef because the king had a big belly, and he loved food, and he's like, oh, I love food, I love, and I love food as well, and he had loads and loads of food, and the chef would make him apple pies and cakes and loads of stuff, and the king was there thinking, I have to share this food with all of the people. Right, I shall invite a feast for 500 of my friends, and they all arrived. Now, the chef was very busy. He spent weeks cooking and baking and making all this sort of stuff. And he had loads of ovens, made all the stuff. And he had all the stuff played out on the tables, like all laid out like that. And the people came in going, oh, and they sat down. The king goes, begin the feast. And they started eating away. Mm, oh, have you tried this delicious, lovely, mm, oh, yummy, mm, very good. Ate all the stuff. And then all the food was gone. And the king goes, more food. And the chef came out, oh, I'm dreadfully sorry, sire, um, but all the food is gone. What? We'll go and make some. Well, I, there's 500 people. It'll take me about 45 minutes to make one apple pie. Well, that's not good enough. And the king was very embarrassed because all of his friends wanted more food and he couldn't make the food. Well, hold on. Mia, I was never invited to this feast. I don't even know who this king is. What am I talking about? Sounds like the feast is all the non-renewable energy in the world, like coal and natural gas and peat and oil. And so these are called fossil fuels because they come from plants and animals that lived on the earth many, many millions of years ago. And so over the years, the animals and the plants broke down. They were buried with the mud and the sand. And over millions of years, the heat and the pressure from the ground being far under the earth squeezed them into, together to make substances like coal. But I mean, the earth is huge. Like it's absolutely massive. It's the biggest thing like we can kind of touch. Like it's so big, much bigger than the moon. And it's going to be full of fossil fuels. There has to be enough here for everyone forever, surely. Unfortunately, just like the feast in the story, we'll eventually use it all up and it takes millions of years to be made, just like the chef's food took a long time to be made. Um, and we eat it so quickly, just like in the story. So we're using up all the energy stored in the earth much faster than it takes to make it. So we need to conserve our energy. Ruben, show everyone how we can do that with your first activity. Yes, indeed. Now, I'm going to give you three very 
Three very important tips about saving energy in your house. The first one is about gadgets in your house. Telephones and, pho uh, and uh, the TV and computers and stuff like that. People leave them plugged in and standby and they're, and they're, trying, they're pushing power into them and they're fully charged and they're ready to go and they don't need the power. So just unplug it if they're fully charged. That's one thing you can do and save a load of energy. Second thing you can do, very easy, washing machine, tumble dryers. People get washing machines and they put, they half fill it. That's a terrible thing. Put a full load in. Look, I used to be, I'd wash one sock at a time <laughs> and now I don't bother washing the socks at all. They're fine. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm only messing. No, I do clean my socks. And do like that. And then of course, you can, if it's a lovely sunny day, just hang the stuff out in the garden. If you have a garden, hang them outside and they'll just dry in the wind. Oh, the wind, perfect. And they'll be able to do the job for you, which is perfect. And then of course, the little fourth little sneaky tip is you can tell all your friends to do the same thing as well. And that'll save a lot of energy. If everyone does a little bit, it'll save a load of energy over time. Perfect. They're great ideas, Reuben. And did you know Dublin Zoo has some really clever ideas for saving energy as well? So they harvest the rainwater and they use it to flush the toilets, which means they save energy taking the water from the mains. And they also plant um, grass on top of the hippo and the rhinos houses, which makes them really, really warm. And that's really energy saving and really energy efficient as well. Oh, wow, that's funny. I never knew that the toilets would be flushed by rain. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. That, that, that works and it's a great idea. That's really good. And also, I think it's time for another story about renewable energy. And this one's called The Giant Torch. <clears throat> Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a little town of people. Now, the people were very small. They were about this size, about the size of my thumb. And they lived on a little island. Now, of course, to you and me, it just looked like a little, a little stone with some uh, grass and some little twigs on it in the middle of a river. A huge river was around them. So they could never leave. They're trapped in there and they lived inside a giant giant cave so it was pitch black they couldn't see where they were going but they one day worked out how to light a fire by burning one of the twigs and they could see each other like oh i can see you this is great and they were very happy but they had to burn all the little twigs and there's only so many twigs on the island now thankfully a giant was walking through the cave and he had his cat his big a a a torch he's going through the torch there he goes he gets a torch he's like oh yes i've got my torch seeing his way through the dark cave like this oh it's very bright and he goes through and he found the little island in the river and he when he shone his torch all the little people looked up and they went oh Light! We can see things! Put out the fires! And the giant was there. He goes, you in the dark? Oh, let me help you. And he shone the light like this. And he decided to stay there forever just to keep them all in the bright. And then he showed them how to use the river because the river going by to make them little wheels and they would make water wheels which would turn and would grind up all of their grain and to make flour. And he taught them all this sort of stuff, which is great. Hold on, me. I've never met a person this size. I've never met giants or this magical cave. What is going on here? Well, Reuben, the tiny island sounds like it's us humans living on Earth. And burning sticks to make light is like us trying to use energy stored on the Earth. Oh, I know. And that means that the giant's torch is... That's the sun. That's the sun. So he was shining it down like that. And they don't have to burn their sticks like us burning forests, whatever, for trees to make, to make, that, make a light. And we actually have it here from the sun. Exactly. So there are many types of renewable energy that we can use. We can use solar energy when the sun shines down on solar panels and this turns light energy into electrical energy or electricity. And we can use that on the roofs of our houses to heat them and to give us light. Uh, you can get hydropower, so using the power of the water to create electricity as well, or wind energy. So we can use wind turbines to harness the, the wind and use that to turn that into electricity. So there's loads of ways we can, we can use not, uh, renewable energy. That's, that would be like if the giant, as well as having the torch, if he was blowing, so like that'd be the sun, and if he was to blow, that'd be like the wind outside that turns uh, big windmills and stuff. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, he did his breath to do all the work for them. Exactly. So a wind turbine is a big, tall tower, and it usually has three blades, and the wind blows and they spin. And the, wind, or the blades are connected to a generator, and that converts the moving energy into electricity. So SSC builds wind turbines, and we put them all together, we call them wind farms and we can build them on land, or they can be out at sea as well. Oh, cool. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have another activity we can do. Don't go, everybody. Look, we can make our own, our own windmill. Ready? You shall need a scissors. Make sure you get a grown to help you, and some paper, okay? So first of all, you're going to cut out a square like this, and you're going to draw two diagonal lines going right through the middle, and then you're going to leave a little mark, just four little marks there. Leave about two centimetres between them, and then you're going to snip it up. Now, I snipped up one here earlier on, and you cut from the corner, right down to the little mark you made like that. And then all you do is you get this and you fold it over like that. Now don't crease it. You have to have a little curl. See the little curl like that? Do a little curl, see a little curl like that? Fold it over like that. 
And then you cut this one and you fold that one over and you cut this one and you, and you do it four times. Now it's easy. I haven't got a table, but you guys don't. You put on the table and maybe get your little brother or sister to hold it with his finger and do another one and do another one. And if you put them all like that, you get your mom and dad to get a little thumbtack and you push it through and get a pencil or a piece of wood and wait till you see. Look at that, look. You actually make a windmill, it's cool. I, if, if this works, I'm gonna be very excited. Go. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm the giant in the story. Look, 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 and it goes like this, a little pencil like that, and you bring it on a windy day, and it'll blow. It totally works, it's great. Great job, Raven, that looks really impressive. So my work here is done today. Um, I'll see you another day for more learning and fun. Bye. Thanks, me, and bye, all the best. Thanks for helping me today. Well, I hope you uh, Eco Explorers have had fun learning about energy. I certainly have. This is all part of the Eco Explorers Club, brought to you by SSC Electricity, proud sustainability partner of Dublin Zoo. Don't forget, you can go to the SSC Electricity website to find out more information at sscelectricity.com slash Eco Explorers Club. Bye, everyone. All the best, team.